Let's imagine you're this person and come in contact with a live wire, which makes a connection to the earth with your body. The ground fault current interrupter turns off the system. If this device wasn't there, this person would have died. This is what I'll talk about in the video. As usual, this is a complex topic. If there are any updates to the content of this video, I will post them in the description. We have two misconceptions. The first is that a circuit breaker will protect you from electrocution. It won't. Circuit breakers protect your system from overloads and short circuits, but not from electrical current passing through your body. Even if a circuit breaker shuts down, it can be too late already. The second one is that electricity takes the path of least resistance. That's not true either. Electricity takes parallel paths and will flow anything that provides a path to the ground, including your body. In a parallel circuit, voltage stays the same. So there will be 120 volts across your body and the appliance. Let's see how much current would pass through this person if he touched a live wire and is connected to ground in some way. If we apply Ohm's law and assume the body has a resistance of 1000 ohms, you will get a current of 120 milliamps through your body. But is that enough to kill you? At 0.5 milliamps, you'll start to feel it. 10 milliamps is the maximum current you can still let go of. But at 50 milliamps, your heart could go into fibrillation, and that's fatal. So, touching the wire will be deadly. The question is, how do we protect ourselves? That's where a ground fault current interrupter, or GFCI, comes in. A GFCI works by comparing the electricity going out to the device through the live wire and comparing it to the current going back to the neutral wire to the source. If there is a difference, the GFCI turns off. If you're in a bathtub and something causes the live wire to come into contact with the ground because the water tap or drain is grounded, the electricity would try to flow through the water and into the earth, which can be very dangerous. A GFCI will detect that the electricity is not flowing back through the neutral wire, the way it should. Instead, it's going into the ground. When the GFCI senses this, it quickly shuts off the power to prevent electric shock. There are lots of stories of people getting electrocuted in a bathtub because soapy water conducts electricity very well. Switching of the circuit happens in a few milliseconds, which can protect you from serious injury or even death. In American homes, GFCIs are usually only installed in wet areas, like bathrooms or for outdoor outlets, where the risk of electric shock is higher. But in Europe, the GFCI protects the entire house. It's installed where the electricity enters the home, so every outlet and circuit in the house is protected from ground faults, not just in certain rooms. This ensures the whole house is covered. One time, a GFCI saved my life. I was standing with my feet in water in a pool filter room. I know, not very smart, while plugging something into a socket. The socket had a bad connection and I got shocked. Thankfully, the GFCI detected the problem and immediately shut off the power, stopping the shock and potentially saving my life. Beware that the test button of a GFCI will not test an actual ground fault, it just tests the switching of the device. 
In my example, I used a 1000 ohm resistor and connect the ground to the live wire. There are two main types of electrical systems, IT and TT systems. There are some other ones, but the video would get too complicated. IT means isoliter, which is French for isolated earth. In an IT system, the system is isolated from the earth. This means if you accidentally touch a live wire, you're safe, as long as you don't complete the circuit. A TT system is more common in residential and off-grid setups. The earth is directly connected to the system. TT means ter ter or earth earth. It refers to the connection to earth at the power generation source and the appliance. So if you touch a live wire, current can flow through your body to the ground. And that's where the danger comes in. Yes, you heard it right. By creating a TT system, we actually make the system more dangerous. Now you might be thinking, why not use an IT system instead? The IT system seems safer because there is no path to the ground. But there are a few reasons we don't use IT systems for residential purposes. While IT systems reduce the risk of electrocution with a single fault, they are harder to maintain. If a fault happens, the system keeps running. This is great for industrial systems, but can be dangerous in a residential system, because you will not realize that a fault already happened. So, in an IT system, a single fault won't trip the system. You need special fault monitoring equipment, called an insulation monitoring device. This can be expensive and complex to set up, but in a TT system, a GFCI or residual current device will trip as soon as a first fault occurs, giving you immediate protection without extra monitoring. That's why you always need to install a GFCI in a TT system. Now let's talk about how to install a GFCI in your off-grid system. Since GFCIs work on the AC side of your system, you'll want to place them right after the inverter, just like I did here. You can see that I have a ground neutral bond as well. This bond is critical because without it, the GFCI won't work properly. Let me remove the ground neutral bond and see if the GFCI trips. Let's repeat the same experiment. As you can see, the GFCI didn't trip. Let's uh, reconnect the ground neutral bond. And do the test again. You can see that the GFCI now tripped because the ground neutral bond is in place. Without a ground neutral bond, the GFCI has no return path for the current to go back to the source. That means if a fault happens, like a live wire touching a grounded appliance, the GFCI won't trip and you could be electrocuted when you touch the surface. So make sure you have the ground neutral bond in place. If you're not sure how to install it, check out my other video on ground neutral bonding. I will link it right here. I also recommend watching my video on how to ground your system. I will also link this as well. Do you already have a ground fault current interrupter in your system? And how did you wire it? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.